Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze from a while, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. And I'd like to give a big shout out to CJ Goodfellow from Sports TV. Bomb Squad, baby. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, The Hellblaze, at thehellblaze.com. 100% all natural products from lotions, soaps, foot soaks, bad bombs, and much, much more. Use the promo code Goodfellow1Boxing. Tell them your boy CJ Goodfellow since you get 18% off. We out. All right, Lou DeBella did an interview with IFL TV that sparked a reaction from Anthony Joshua, and it hasn't yet sparked a reaction from Deontay Wilder, but let's talk about it. We back, Goodfellow Sports TV. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. I appreciate the love and support. Um, and Lou DeBella basically said that he was exiled from Premier Boxing Champions when he proceeded to make uh, Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder. He said when he set those meetings up with the zone and Wilder that basically Al Heyman and Shelly Finkel didn't want that or whoever is controlling Deontay Wilder, they didn't want that. And that, you know, sparked the reaction from Anthony Joshua, which he said on Instagram that when the loyalty falls apart, the truth comes out. So, like I said, I remember going back about a couple years ago. When people were saying, well, Wilder, the only the real one, Wilder's the only real one that want to fight everybody. And I've been telling you guys that I wouldn't say that as well, neither. I like Deontay Wilder, spectacular fighter, true, real black champion. And it doesn't change my opinion that I feel that he would beat Anthony Joshua. But once again, it's Al Heyman, the premier boxing champions, denying you guys another fight that you want to see. And I got some more. I got another video that's going to come and blow you guys mind. All the truth is coming out. Now, people say, well, Lou Salty. Well, you got to remember, like if you watch the interview and I put the interview in the description of the source link, Lou DeBella started off with well, he was HBO executive for about 10 or 11 years. And based off of that, he says he's going into the Hall of Fame, which he must be a Hall of Fame inductee uh, this year. And um, he ran HBO and he told he basically in an interview explained how to help. He said you have a strong quality control guy that basically, you know, he basically picks up the fights or denies the fights that should be on HBO. And if he said every network had a strong quality control guy, a guy that approved and declined fights in boxing would be a lot better. And that's not the case. Showtime don't have that. Premier Boxing Champions that work on Fox FS1, The Zone. And he touched on Eddie Hearn as well, too. You know, he basically said that Eddie Hearn is spending all this money in a market that he has no idea with, which a lot of people said before, include myself, and he hurt in the game as well, too. He said that first. And he said people like him is getting effed over. It is true. The main events, the the uh, the, the Bella Entertainment, the uh, TGB promotions, uh, Samson to Lewinsky, they got to pick a side. And if you're not with a big, if you're not with a big player, if you're not with top rank, or you're not with the zone, or you're not with Premier Boxing Champions, then you're gonna get rolled over. You know what I'm saying? If it wasn't for Showtime, Demetrius Saltier, whatever his name is, he wouldn't be on TV. If Showtime shut today down today, Demetrius Saltier would have to go either work with Al Heyman or have to go work with the zone, or he had to go work with top rank. And like Lou DeBella said, it shouldn't be that way. He said Sergey Dervichenko has received one fight offer since beating triple G, since losing the triple G in a close competitive fight where people thought he got robbed. That, in his opinion, was fight of the year. You know, he got mad when asked if Regis Progress contract was up. He almost walked out the interview and said that the guy that was interviewing wouldn't ask Eddie Hearn that question, which IFL always asks Eddie Hearn like questions like that. But he basically explained. That, you know, when you're dealing with a fighter that's on his last fight with his contract or at the end of his contract, you know, his contract is truly not over because of stipulations, because he always can match and bring them back. So boxing contracts, like I try to explain to people, people say, why did Bud sign back to top rank? I can't really explain something that people that, that don't want to sit down and listen. I've been saying it the whole time is because top rank has the right to match any offer or as well. Crawford can fight for a championship and extends his, his contract by two or three fights, whatever it is. So boxing contracts is not like NFL contracts where you sign to fight five years or play five years, or you sign a, an NBA five years of your contract up, you a free agent, where they can tag you for one year, franchise tag you in the NFL, uh, or franchise tag you a second year, put the transitional tag. Boxing contracts are not like that. People think it's one plus one equal two. It's far from it. But it's a, it's a dope interview. You know, he talked about a lot of things. 
and it may, and it may, it kind of, he kind of exposes the dirty tricks in the industry, but back to talking about what he said about Deontay Wilder, and I'm going to just roll the rest of the video with that and, and kind of give my synopsis on what AJ said. I believe it. I believe it. Al Heyman and Shelly Fink were them premier boxing champions. They don't, they don't, they don't want to submit to Eddie Hearn. They don't want Eddie Hearn. They don't want to have Deontay Wilder go fight Anthony Joshua on Eddie Hearn terms. No matter if they, no, no matter if they feel Deontay Wilder would knock him out in a matter of rounds or a matter of seconds or minutes, they the ones holding up that fight. To be honest, when he made the fifty million dollar offer, everybody was saying, "Well, you know, oh, uh, you know, AJ got to take it. Take it. He duck fifty million, right?" Around a year later. He was offered $120 million, $100 million for a fight, $125 fight. It was, it was two offers for $100 and $125. The, fights was, the amount of fights was different. And Wilder ducked the, ducked the, fade, ducked the uh, contract, and he went to Showtime to fight Dominic Brazil. Now, that fight was had to be on pay-per-view, but Showtime and Al Heyman scraped the money together via Steven Espinosa's uh, vo uh, voice or his opinion or that his statement on the boxing voice last week, and they got $20 million together for Wilder to fight Dominic Brazil and keep it on regular showtime. Now I've reported that he was getting 20 million, but Hey, nobody wanted to believe me, but Hey, so instead of him taking the deal and it was a good deal, pretty much, you know, Al Heyman, they, they pretty much said no. They made Deontay Wilder turn down the deals because they don't want Wilder going to be on AJ turns, but AJ holds three belts and he owes the IBO. AJ is the star. AJ's putting a hundred thousand people in their stadiums while Wilder is failing to fill up the MGM Grand Garden that holds around fifteen or sixteen thousand for a boxing event. Why him and De him and Tyson Fury failed to, failed to fill up the Staples Center? Why they won't sell out the the uh, T-Mobile Arena? Now Lou DeBella, you know, said one no salty grapes, and Wilder still him and Fury still one A one B or one and two in the division. You know, which I feel that Wilder Fury would be Anthony Joshua as well, but he kept it real. He said he was exiled, meaning he was banned from Premier Boxing Champions for trying to make Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder fight and sitting him down with his own. Now, could he got a phone call from Al Heyman and say, well, don't set this meeting up? Or could he been warned about setting this meeting up? Or did he know the agenda from Premier Boxing Champions not to make this uh, that that meeting you know, meeting happened or they really didn't want to fight Deontay Wilder to fight Anthony Joshua. Now, Anthony Deontay Wilder ain't no hoe, but he just with the wrong people. I've been saying it from the beginning. I've been a hater. I told you guys when they ran Charles Martin over and made Anthony Joshua a champion, when they could have made Wilder a unified champion, you know, Al Heyman just care about the green. He really don't care about Deontay. People forgetting Deontay Wilder, what, 34, 35 years old, be 35, 36 this year. AJ, what, 30, 31? Come on, them dinosaurs, them, them big years, them dinosaur years, you getting older, especially in the heavyweight division and they milking Wilder and Wilder getting bad business advice. He getting bad business advice. I said again, he getting bad business advice, you know, and Lou DeBella really tried to make the fight happen. That lets you know, know everything you want to know right there. Premier boxing champions want everybody across the street. When Sean Porter said, Oh, we're not going over there no more. Everybody got to come over here. He meant that. He just didn't mean that for Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia, Errol Spence, Yugis, Lippies, or whatever the situation with the situation is. He meant that from Jamal Charlo to Jamel Charlo to Deontay Wilder to Caleb Plant to David Benavidez to Gary Russell to Leo Santa Cruz to Javante Davis. No matter if we offer you Demetrius Andre, I mean Demetrius Andre coming over. No matter if we offer you significant less money. Unless you come over here and take less money, we're not coming to your platform to fight. And that goes for Deontay Wilder as well, too. That's it. It's, this is about a power struggle. Al Heyman want to prove that he's more powerful than everybody else, that he can beat the system by just making fights under his banner. He can finesse. He can pay the sanction of bell bodies to make his guys look better. But eventually, history tells us that don't work. Eventually, Fox don't get mad. Because you're not going to be making the best fights. You're going to be milking Fox. I'm telling you what's going to happen. Top Rank did the same thing. That's how they fell off of HBO. Top Rank didn't want to work with Al Heyman. You know, they got Al Heyman exiled off HBO. 
That's why Golden Boy end up Al Hamm end up on Showtime, because Bob Arum fine finesse Peter Nielsen, or was it uh, uh the other guy? Excuse me, uh, not Peter before Peter Nielsen, Ken Hirschman. Ken Hirschman was on Showtime and he came to HBO, and Stephen Espinosa left HBO and came to Showtime, and he he convinced either Ken Hirschman or Peter Nielsen, whoever was there at the time, which I think was Hirschman. That Al Heyman was bad for business, and Al Heyman had them put a lot of money into Andre Berto, and Andre Berto failed to be a star. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, long story short, they cut that relationship off. Top rank thought they can just they didn't want to make fights with Al Heyman. They didn't want to make a lot of fights with Oscar De La Hoya, Golden Boy with Al. The one fight they did make was like Vanez and Lara won. It was terrible. And long story short, Bob got Al Heyman pushed off HBO, which was bad for HBO. Well, what HBO should have did was made Al Heyman and Bob Arum and Oscar and all them work together. Long story short, Al Heyman and, and Stephen and Richard Schaefer put the stiffs to Oscar De La Hoya due to some substance abuse problems. They ran the contracts out while he was in rehab. Floyd beat up on Canelo, ran his contract of his fighters back out, sent some fighters back to Golden Boy. Some fighters came back like Leo Santa Cruz to Al Heyman. Golden Boy went back to HBO. And, you know, they didn't have enough firepower to make fights, to keep big fights on HBO. HBO went to the European European invasion. And long story short, they kicked Top Rank off because Top Rank didn't want to play ball and make fights. Bob just wanted to make in-house fights. Eventually, Golden Boy main events couldn't hold the fort down, and they fell apart. You know, and now top, Bob Arum and Top Rank and Todd DeBuff, they learned from their they mistakes. So now they know, you know, what it feel like to survive you know, you have to work with other promotional companies. So all Al Heyman is doing is repeating uh, history, even though his stable is deeper than top rank, but he not making the best uh, fights amongst his stable. He marinated the best fight and the best on his stable, therefore making them more like what top rank was. So history repeats itself. Bob Aaron been in the game for a long time. It used to be Muhammad Ali uh, uh, promotional company to Bob finesse them out of it, however it went. So Al Heyman is just repeating is just repeating history. What's going to be different is nothing. Al Heyman going to end up just like top rank and work with everybody else again on a regular basis if he want to stay in the game. But that's one of the reasons they got to bring Dana White in. But like I said before, man, he exposed him. And Anthony Joshua, he posed to be like that. Anthony Joshua, you know, he made he they made a real offer, hundred twenty million dollars. Why do not go make that fight in Fury five times? Probably, <laughs> I'm not say that jokingly, but he's not gonna make that. You know, he they're not gonna do no huge pay per views, no two million dollar million pay per views. This pay per view was lucky to do five hundred thousand. You know what I'm saying? He could have fought Anthony Joshua, and he could have got twenty to fight uh, uh, Dominic Brazil easy. Then he could have got a forty to fight Luis Ortiz again. Long as they approved him, then he could have beat beat Anthony Joshua by now. But he getting some bad advice. And Lou DeBella said he wished him nothing but the best. And he said we don't have no ill will towards each other because he can't be mad at Wilder. Wilder don't control his career. Al Heyman do. And Al Heyman had Andy Ruiz fire Manny Robis because Andy Ruiz was lazy. I got that confirmed. And Al Heyman got rid of Lou DeBella because Lou DeBella actually tried to make a fight happen. And Al Heyman wanted to happen on his terms. And Lou DeBella also touched on, you know, why wouldn't the fight happen in the UK? Why do why would Anthony Joshua come to America where Deontay Wilder can't sell shit out? And I'm paraphrasing there. I'm putting my own twist on it, but that's basically what he said in the interview. He said, Why why stupid? Would the why would, would the premier box where the premier champion league, whatever they call it, the soccer league go somewhere else? No. The fight should happen in the UK because Deontay Wilder don't sell nothing out in America. AJ is the bigger star in a hundred thousand seat stadium, the atmosphere. Now, if water was the big star and he had the IBF title, like Al Heyman should have fed him Charles Martin. Then we had a different conversation, but he is the C side to Anthony Joshua's a side. Since y'all want to play a side B side, he's the C side. Anthony Joshua was 10 times to star. Deontay water could be, and people sit here. So well, water is a star. No, he not. How you a star? You're not selling out in Vegas. How you start? You you can't you did you did three hundred fifty thousand versus Tyson Fury, and it really probably was like three hundred thousand. You ain't no star, Anthony Joshua over there doing real numbers. Name me a time where Saudi Arabia offered uh water eighty five million to come over there and fight. Come on, but y'all know what it is, man. Goodfellas Sports TV. I put the IFL interview in the description. Uh, Anthony Joshua had I put a link in the description where he reacted to it on, on social media. But like I said before, man, uh, stop believing these fighters, bro. I had to get hip too. 
you know, and nobody isn't got impeccable character no more because they don't control their careers. But hey, uh, want to make a donation? PayPal, Cash App in the description. Appreciate it if you do make a donation, but the best donation you can make is hit that share button and share with another boxing fan. Check out our NBA, NFL, boxing news, boxing rumor, heavyweight, middleweight playlist. We got a ton of them to categorize our content. Don't forget, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter as well. Email in the description if you need to reach out to me. If you got business question, cry, response, share, video request, one time for the one time. It's your boy, CJ Goodfella, Goodfella Sports TV. And let me know what you guys think about the video in the description. Once again, the interview the link is in the description under source link. Check it out. We gone.